Evidence for the wave nature of light accumulated throughout the 19th century due to the work of Thomas Young, James Clerk Maxwell and others. By the late 19th century though, a number of puzzling experiments challenged existing understanding and ultimately forced a radical reinterpretation of the nature of light. One such experiment was the photoelectric effect. This is the first video in a playlist of videos on the photoelectric effect and we'll discuss what was so puzzling about it with the help of the following simulation. Over on the left here is a copper plate and over here is a source of electromagnetic radiation that I'm going to turn on in a moment. Don't worry about the battery and the current reading down here. We won't be talking about these in this video. If I turn the source on so that it emits ultraviolet or UV radiation, we see that some electrons are emitted from the copper plate. This is known as photoemission, and the emitted electrons are known as photoelectrons. Let's see what happens if we increase the wavelength of the source, which is equivalent to decreasing the frequency. You can see that far fewer photoelectrons are emerging now. If we keep decreasing the frequency, we eventually reach a special frequency of about 1.1 times 10 to the 15 hertz. Below this frequency, it doesn't matter for how long the source is shone onto the plate or even how bright or intense the source is. No electrons are emitted. This special frequency is known as the threshold frequency. If we replace the copper plate with a sodium plate, we see that once again photoemission occurs. This tells us that the threshold frequency depends on the metal plate being used. If we decrease the frequency of the source to below sodium's threshold frequency of roughly 5.5 times 10 to the 14 hertz, we see that photoemission stops. Let's summarize these observations. You may want to pause the video here and read over what we've noted down. Let's now return to the simulation. What happens if we gradually increase the intensity of the radiation and change nothing else? You can see that the number of emitted electrons, the photoelectrons, increases proportionally with the intensity. Let's make a note of this. One thing you may have already noticed is that the photoelectrons emerge with a range of speeds and therefore a range of kinetic energies. Interestingly, the maximum kinetic energy doesn't depend on the intensity. While reducing the intensity has reduced the number of photoelectrons that emerge per second, the maximum kinetic energy of the emitted electrons hasn't changed. We'll explain this point further when we discuss what's known as the stopping potential in a future video. For a fixed metal, the maximum kinetic energy only depends on the frequency of the radiation. Hopefully it's quite clear that increasing the frequency has the effect of increasing the maximum kinetic energy. Let's add this to our observations. Let's now return once more to the simulation. The last puzzling observation to discuss is that if the radiation source is turned on, emission of electrons occurs without delay. Surprisingly, this happens for even the lowest intensities, as you just saw. Let's jot this down. Observations 1, 3 and 4 were puzzling, since the prevailing wave theory of light seemed to be incapable of explaining them. Notice that the word intensity is mentioned in all four observations. Unsurprisingly then, the concept of intensity is at the heart of what was so puzzling about the photoelectric effect. To recap, the intensity of a beam of radiation is defined to be power divided by area. 
By power, we mean the energy arriving per second onto a surface of some area at right angles to the beam, as shown. Now there are various ways by which you can increase the intensity and therefore have more energy arriving per second onto the plate. This appears to nicely explain observation 2. With more energy incident per second, we would expect proportionally more electrons to gain enough energy to escape the metal. However, wave theory offers no explanation for the existence of a threshold frequency, mentioned in observation 1. According to wave theory, it ought to be possible to eject electrons at any frequency, assuming that the radiation is of high enough intensity and is incident for long enough. Basically, it was thought that if you shone any light for long enough, eventually electrons would gain enough energy to escape. Also, wave theory can't explain the point in observation number 3, that the maximum kinetic energy doesn't depend on intensity. Physicists at the time expected that, with increasing intensity, the maximum kinetic energy would naturally increase, since the electrons could gain more energy from the radiation. Wave theory is also incapable of explaining why the maximum kinetic energy appears to only depend on frequency. Lastly, the fact that the electrons are emitted with no delay, even for very low intensity radiation, observation number 4, once again appears puzzling when viewed through the lens of wave theory. If electrons need to gain a minimum amount of energy to escape, wave theory predicts that the radiation would have to be incident for a certain amount of time before emission could occur. This is because the electrons would gain energy gradually, not instantaneously. Observations 1 and 3 suggest that the frequency of the radiation is key to the puzzle. Indeed, Albert Einstein used this clue to propose a radical solution to the puzzle, and in the process fundamentally changed our understanding of light. We'll discuss this solution in the next video in this playlist on the photoelectric effect. Just want to thank FET for their incredible simulation that I've used in this video. I'll leave a link to it in the description, and I highly encourage you to check it out and have a play around with it to enhance your understanding. Please like and share the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, take care and I hope to see you soon.